The Catalonia offensive was part of the Spanish Civil War. The Nationalist Army started the offensive on December 23, 1938 and rapidly conquered Republican-held Catalonia with Barcelona. Barcelona was captured on January 26, 1939. The Republican government headed for the French border. Thousands of people fleeing the Nationalists also crossed the frontier in the following month, to be placed in internment camps. Franco closed the border with France by February 10, 1939. After its defeat at the Battle of the Ebro the Republican army was broken and would never recover. The Republicans had lost most of their armament and experienced units. Furthermore, in October 1938 the Republican government agreed to withdraw the volunteers of the international brigades. On the other hand, the Nationalists received new supplies of ammunition, weapons and aircraft from Germany. Furthermore, after the Munich Agreement, the hope of an intervention of the Western democracies in order to aid the Republic against Germany and Italy vanished. France had closed the frontier again in mid-June 1938 and frozen Republican financial assets in French banks. At the beginning of December, the rebel faction concentrated an army group, the Army of the North, of 300,000 to 340,000 men led by the General Fidel de Vila in order to conquer Catalonia. The nationalists assembled their best divisions all along the front from the Pyrenees to the Mediterranean. Along the Segre the nationalists deployed Munoz Granza's army of Urgel, Garcia Valino's army of Maestrasco and Moscardo's Aragon army, in the confluence of the Segre with the Ebro Gambara's Italian Cuerpo Legionario Italiano of four divisions and Solchaga's army corps of Navarra, and in the Ebro the Yogs Moroccan Corps. The nationalists also had, according to Beaver, 300 tanks, more than 500 aircraft and 1,400 cannon. Opposing the nationalists, the Republicans had Colonel Perea's East Army and Colonel Juan Modesto's Ebro Army under the command of General Juan Hernandez Sarabia, commander of the Oriental Region's Army Group, with 220,000 to 300,000 men. Many unarmed, 106 airplanes, 250 cannons and 40 tanks. The Soviet government agreed to send to Catalonia a shipment of 250 aircraft, 250 tanks and 650 cannons, but the shipment did not reach Bordeaux until 15 January and only a small part of it crossed the border. Furthermore, because of the international isolation of the Republic and the lack of food, according to Beaver, in Barcelona the ration per day was down to 100 grams of lentils, the morale of the government troops and civil population in the Republican zone was very low. The people only wish the end of the war, just let it be over, it doesn't matter how it ends, but let it end now. The nationalist offensive was planned for 10th of December but was postponed to 23rd of December. On 23rd of December the Italians and the Navarrese's crossed the Segre at Mequinenza, broke the Republican lines, and advanced 16 kilometers, but they were stopped by the 5 and 15 Republican Corps led by Lister on 25th of December. On the left flank, Munoz Granz and Garcia Valino advanced towards Trevera and Artesa, but they were blocked by the 26th Republican Division. On the south, Yogg's troops were held back by the Ebro's floodwater. The Republicans had stopped the first nationalist attack, nevertheless, they had lost 40 aircraft in the first 10 days of the battle. On 3 January Solchaga attacked Le Borges Blanques, Munoz Granz and Garcia Valino occupied Artesa, and Yogg crossed the Ebro. Moscardo attacked from Yeda and the Italians occupied Le Borges Blanques on 5 January. The same day, the Republican army started a surprise attack in Extremadura towards Pinaroya in order to divert nationalist forces, but the offensive was halted after a few days and the nationalist offensive in Catalonia continued. On 9 January the Moscardo's Aragon Army Corps joined Gambara at Malarusa and broke the northern part of the front. The 5 and 15 Republican Corps collapsed and retreated in disorder. On 15 January the Aragon and Maestrasco Corps conquered Cervera and the Moroccan Corps after a one-day march of 50 kilometers occupied Tarragona. By this day, the Nationalists had conquered a third of Catalonia, had taken 23,000 prisoners, and had killed 5,000 Republican soldiers. The Republican government then attempted to organize a defense of Barcelona, ordering the general mobilization of all men to 45 and militarized all the industry. Nevertheless, the successive defensive lines fell, the Republican forces were outnumbered 6 to 1 and the Nationalist Air Force bombed Barcelona every day. It became clear that the defense of the city was impossible. On 22nd of January Solchaga and Yog reached the Lubregat only a few miles west of Barcelona, Munoz Granz and Garcia Valino attacked Sabadell and Terrassa, and Gambara advanced to Badalona. The chief of staff of the Republican army, 
Rojo told the Republican Prime Minister Negrin that the front had ceased to exist so the government abandoned Barcelona after releasing most of its prisoners. A large part of the Barcelona population fled from the city as well. On 24th of January Garcia Valino occupied Manresa, and on 25th of January the nationalist vanguard occupied the Tibidabo in the outskirts of Barcelona. The nationalists finally occupied Barcelona on 26th of January and there were five days of looting by the Yogs regulars and extrajudicial killings. After the occupation of Barcelona, the nationalist troops, tired from the long marches, slowed their advance but soon resumed their offensive, pursuing the retreating columns of Republican soldiers and civilians. On 1st of February Negrin proposed, in the last meeting of the Cortes in the Figueres castle, capitulation with the sole condition of respecting the lives of the vanquished and the holding of a plebiscite so the Spanish people could decide the form of government. But Franco did not accept. On 2nd of February the nationalists entered Girona, arrived within 50 kilometers of the frontier on 3rd of February, occupied Figueres on 8th of February and Rojo ordered the Republican troops to withdraw to the French frontier. Hundreds of thousands of Republican soldiers, women, children and old men marched to the French frontier on foot and on carts, buses and trucks through bitterly cold sleet and snow. Their retreat was covered by units of the Republican Army, which carried out hit-and-run attacks and ambushes. The Nationalist Air Force and the Condor Legion bombed and strafed the roads leading to France. On 28th of January the French government announced that civilians could cross the frontier and, on 5th of February, the Republican soldiers as well. Between 400,000 and 500,000, Republican refugees crossed the frontier, among them the President of the Republic, the Prime Minister and the Chief of Staff of the Republican Army. As well the President of Catalonia and the members of the Catalan government. Negrin returned to Spain on 9th of February but Azana and Rojo refused to return. By 9th of February the Nationalists reached the frontier, and on the following day the last units of Modesto's army of the Ebro crossed into France and the Nationalists sealed the frontier. Spain after the conclusion of the Catalonia Offensive. Nationalist Spain is in grey and Republican Spain is in white. With the fall of Catalonia, the Republic lost the second largest city of the country, the Catalan war industry and a large part of its army. On 2nd of February Azana resigned and the same day France and the United Kingdom recognized the Francoist government. Further military resistance became impossible and the war was lost for the Republic, despite the fact that 30% of Spain was still under Republican control after the offensive and Prime Minister Juan Negrin insisted that the Republic could continue to resist. The Catalonia autonomy was abolished. The Catalan language, the Sardana and Catalan Christian names were forbidden. All Catalan newspapers were requisitioned and the forbidden books retired and burned. Even the inscriptions on tombs in the Montjuic Cemetery commemorating Durruti, Ascazo and Ferrer I Guardia were removed. The Republican exiles were interned in 15 improvised camps by the French government in places such as Argelis, Bourg, Rivesaltis, and Vernay. The living conditions in the camps were very harsh. In the first six months, 14,672 refugees died from malnutrition or dysentery. The French government encouraged the refugees to return and, by the end of 1939, between 70,000 and 180,000 refugees returned to Spain. However, 300,000 never returned. Many sought asylum in other countries, the Soviet Union, USA and Canada, Great Britain, Belgium and other European countries. And Latin America. Nevertheless, at least 140,000 refugees remained in France while 19,000 went to the French colonies of North Africa. After the fall of France 10,000 to 15,000 refugees were detained by the Nazis and deported to concentration camps. Another 10,000 joined the French resistance and more than 2,000 joined the Free French Forces. Thanks for watching.